Welcome to Net Zero. The UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has said that young people are at the forefront of efforts to secure a more inclusive, peaceful, and prosperous future for all. Today on Net Zero, we are delighted to welcome 15 year old climate leader Ridhima Pandey, a TEDx speaker and one of the BBC's 100 most influential and empowering women. Ridhima is a pioneer in litigation for inaction on climate change. At the age of nine, she sued the Indian government for not respecting its commitments in the Paris Agreement. More recently, she was one of the 16 climate activists to file a complaint against several governments at the UN. Welcome, Ridhima. How are you today? Very, very good. Thanks for having me. I'm sure that suing the government of India was not an easy task. Could you shed some light on your experience and the progress of climate justice in recent years? I mean, it was definitely not something that was really very easy. But what I can say is that, um, I mean, when, when I sued the government, I was like nine years old. So I didn't knew that, um, I mean, it could be difficult suing the government and, you know, um, things could happen and, you know, there would be trollings and stuff like that. So once I did the petition and once I started facing those things, I can say that was a point of time I realized I've gotten into something which is kind of difficult to handle for a nine year old. And then I can say, I mean, uh, gradually as I was um, learning and as I was working, um, I can say I learned about all the problems in India, like say, for example, um, the negligence about climate change and, you know, how people are not aware about climate change and how parents don't really want their kids to take action. And as well, I mean, back in 2017, when I basically did the petition against the government of India, um, there were not really many kids, those who were into, um, say, climate activism or being an activist or taking action or voicing out for the animals and the planet. Um, but recently, I mean, these years, I can say there has been a huge progress among, you know, the youngsters, um, them knowing what climate change is, uh, them fighting for their rights. I can say that has increased a lot uh, in the past few years. And as well, I mean, the whole community where, you know, all the people, I mean, all the youngsters come together, like our climate community. I mean, there has been a lot many kids, those who are starting work, uh, those who have started working in India. And at the same time, I can say, I mean, the mindset of the people are is, is somewhere shifting a bit, but it's still not um, that great. I mean, still parents won't let their kids take action. COP27 was both a failure and a success. What are your thoughts on the loss and damage fund? What are the next steps that the Indian government needs to take? Um, I mean, I still have like, I mean, every single time when the COPs happen, I always have this mixed feelings about, I mean, I'm not sure what I think about the cops because I mean it, it it in itself is something that I am not really fond of to be honest um but I can say I mean the establishment of the funds is is really a great step but then it comes to I mean uh, how it's going to be delivered and you know how greatly or how nicely the countries those who are going to get it are going to use it you know whether it's going to be used on ground or whether it's going to be wasted like you know all the other funds and all the other you know um basically you know all the projects that have been funded by the government itself in the country so i can say i mean the establishment of funds is is really a great step but then it comes to you know how fast the funds are going to proceed how fast the things are going to work on now and how you know the countries are going to strategize about um how they're going to use it and stuff like that that's a big question for me and at the same time, I mean, I can say, for example, for Indian government, they are, of course, going to ex access the funds as well, um, because we're still, you know, a developing country still needs to do a lot and still, you know, facing a lot and yet exploiting a lot as well. But what I can say is that, you know, the Indian government really has to come forward and start working on the grounds, because as far as what I can see, whether it's, you know, our NDCs or whether it's, you know, also, the statements made by the officials and everything or on the bigger platforms, it just, you know, when, when you listen to them, it makes you feel like, you know, the country is really sort of, you know, really into climate um, justice and, you know, saving and conservation and everything. But when you see the work or the actions or the decisions that the government has been making, it's totally the opposite. So I can say, I mean, I, it, it's really important for the government to basically um, prioritize environment right now and start working more towards conservation instead of saying that we still need to get developed or the country is still lacking behind. Because I can say, I mean, we can take a few years for conservation and, you know, take a take some time and, you know, basically um, make sort of, you know, the projects in a way that um, 
you know it's more towards you know it it is like eco sensitive and uh, um it's it's not exploiting and you know so we are, we are creating development but we are saving the environment as well not destroying it and just you know just focusing on the money and you know basically the big buildings and everything that's what the development is for access to a safe and healthy future is a child's right what is your message to young climate activists like you and i what can you say to them about the next steps for achieving net zero what i can say is that um leading a net zero life is a really a big statement for you know for people like us i mean basically i mean if, you, if you're in india i can't really say that we can lead 100% you know net zero life is like lifestyle you know having no waste and stuff like that because we don't really have that much often you know um resources here i mean even if i want to go vegan you know i won't have i mean where i live in uttarakhand i don't have um that many all options and resources for me so i mean i end up being vegetarian and sometimes people end up being you know even being non vegetarian because of health issues and stuff like that so what i can say is that you know if if a person is an activist or you know not only just being an activist all the time but you know if a person is concerned about the environment and they're trying at least their best to you know do anything they can to um you know conserve or um to create awareness about climate change or about child rights or about how it is impacting us or how actions how our actions you know are impacting the people on the front lines the poor people the poor communities then you know they are doing a really great job and what i can say is that you know firstly we really have to keep going on because i mean we won't see progress instantly that's what happened with me i mean when when i started i thought things are going to change very quickly as soon as i would start taking action but back then i was 9 and here i am 15 still working and you know still not seeing the progress that i wanted to see back then so what i can say is that you know it's it's a process which is going to take a lot of time and we won't see actions or you know we won't say, see um results very quickly because at the very end if you're talking about um our in person's activity like things that we can do like changing our lifestyles and stuff like that it's not going to bring up a big change you know if just a few people do it so we need more and more people to do thank you thank you so much once again this is ved sanyal i add my voice to the voices of my net zero international youth peers to monitor the action of our world leaders and to achieve net zero commitments together we can achieve net zero